You look up at the night sky, see all that empty space, and think, Hey, why don't we just shoot all our trash up there? Problem solved! It seems so obvious, doesn't it? I mean, we've got mountains of garbage, and space is basically an infinite dumpster. So why aren't we launching our old pizza boxes and broken toys into the sun right now? Today, I'll explain why we don't launch our trash into the sun like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand why this seemingly brilliant idea is actually about as practical as using a butterfly net to catch a speeding train. It turns out, shooting trash into space isn't like throwing a ball into your neighbor's yard. It's not as simple as building a really, really big slingshot and aiming for the bright yellow thing in the sky. And it's definitely not like those cartoons where someone lights a giant firecracker and whoosh, off goes the garbage into the stars. What it actually is, is one of the most expensive, complicated, and ridiculously difficult things that humans have ever tried to do. Let's start with the biggest problem. Getting anything off of Earth is really, really, really hard. Imagine you're at the bottom of the deepest swimming pool in the world, and you want to throw a rock all the way to the surface. Except, this isn't water that you're swimming in. It's thick, invisible honey that's trying to pull you down. That invisible honey is called gravity, and Earth has a lot of it. Gravity is like an invisible giant that is constantly pulling everything down toward the ground. When you drop your toy, gravity pulls it down. When you jump, gravity pulls you back down. And when we try to send anything into space, gravity is fighting us every single step of the way. To escape Earth's gravity, rockets have to go incredibly fast. No, not car fast, not airplane fast, but faster than anything you've ever seen in your entire life fast. They have to reach something called escape velocity, which is about 25,000 miles per hour. That's so fast that if you could drive your car at that speed, you could drive around the entire Earth in about an hour. Just think about that for a second. Your family's car probably goes about 60 miles per hour on the highway, and that feels pretty zippy, right? Well, to get to space, we need to go more than 400 times faster than that. It's like the difference between a snail crawling and a lightning bolt striking. Now, to make something go that fast, you need fuel. Lots and lots and lots of fuel. Think about how much gas your family's car needs just to drive to grandma's house. Now, imagine needing enough fuel to make your car go 400 times faster. That's a lot of gas, isn't it? And rockets need so much fuel that most of what they carry isn't actually cargo or trash. It's just fuel to burn so that they can go fast enough to escape Earth's invisible honey grip. It's like if you wanted to carry one small backpack on a hiking trip, but you had to bring 20 huge suitcases full of energy bars just to have enough strength to carry that one little backpack. Most of the rocket is just fuel, fuel, and more fuel. But wait, there's more! Getting to space is only half the battle. Once you're actually in space, you're not automatically heading toward the sun. This is where it gets really tricky. Like trying to throw a ball at a moving target while you're spinning on a merry-go-round. Earth is zooming around the sun at about 67,000 miles per hour. That is, again, really, really fast. So when you launch something from Earth, it doesn't just sit still in space. It starts with the same speed Earth already has. It's like if you're on a train going 100 miles per hour and you throw a ball forward. The ball doesn't start at 0 miles per hour. It starts at 100 miles per hour, plus however fast you throw it. So, when we launch our trash rocket, it starts by going around the sun at the same speed as Earth. To actually fall into the sun, we'd have to slow it down by almost all of that speed. We'd have to take away nearly 67,000 miles per hour worth of speed. That's like trying to stop a runaway train by throwing pebbles at it. It requires even more fuel, more rockets, and more energy than just getting off Earth in the first place. It's not like aiming a water balloon at your friend across the yard. It's like trying to throw that water balloon at your friend while you're both riding roller coasters going in different directions. Now, let's talk about just how much this would cost. Right now, it costs about $10,000 to $20,000 to send just one pound of anything into space. One pound. That's like a small bag of sugar. Your average bag of household trash weighs most likely more than one pound. So, let's say your family throws away about 10 pounds of trash every day. To launch just one day's worth of trash into space would cost you between $100,000 and $200,000. That is enough money to buy a really, really nice car, and that's just for one day of trash from one family. Imagine trying to launch all the trash from your entire neighborhood, your entire city, your entire country. We'd be spending more money on launching trash than we would spend on about everything else combined. 
In fact, we would be so busy launching trash that we wouldn't have money left over for food, schools, hospitals, or really anything else that we need. But let's go ahead and pretend here just for fun that money wasn't a problem. Let's imagine that we just had infinite dollars and could afford to launch all of our trash into space. There's still another big problem. Rockets sometimes explode. Not always, but sometimes. It's like if every time you tried to throw away your trash, there was a chance that your trash bag might just explode and scatter garbage all over your neighborhood. Except instead of just your neighborhood, we're talking about exploding trash all over the atmosphere and raining down on people's heads. Now, nobody wants to be walking to school and suddenly get bonked by a flying banana peel that was supposed to be heading to the sun. When rockets explode, they don't just disappear quietly. They create huge messes. All the trash that was supposed to go away forever instead gets scattered across the sky and falls back down to earth as burning, dangerous debris. It's like trying to clear your room by throwing everything out the window, but then having it all blow back inside during a windstorm, except now everything is also on fire. Now that doesn't sound like a good solution to our trash problem, does it? There's also the problem of how much trash we can actually make. Humans create billions and billions of pounds of trash every single year. We're talking trash-making machines that never stop running. To launch all that trash, we would need thousands and thousands of rockets every single day. I mean, the sky would be constantly full of rockets going up and up and up. It would be like having a permanent fireworks show. Except instead of pretty colors, it's just garbage flying overhead all the time. Now, the noise alone would drive everyone crazy. Imagine trying to sleep while rockets are launching trash 24 hours a day outside your window. Plus, building all those rockets would create even more trash and pollution. Rockets are made of metals and plastics and all sorts of materials that have to be mined from the ground and manufactured in factories. Making thousands of rockets every day would probably create more waste and pollution than the trash that we're trying to get rid of. It's like trying to clean up a spilled glass of water by breaking 10 more glasses. You end up with a bigger mess than when you started. Here's another funny thing. Even if we could somehow launch all of our trash into the sun, the sun wouldn't really notice. The sun is so incredibly huge and hot that our little bags of garbage would just get vaporized instantly. It's like throwing a single grain of sand into a bonfire the size of a mountain. The sun would just shrug and keep on burning like nothing happened. All that effort, all that money, all those rockets just to feed our trash to a giant space furnace that doesn't even care about our leftovers. But wait, what if we didn't aim for the sun? What if we just shot our trash into empty space and left it to float around forever? Well, that creates a whole world of different problems. Space might look empty, but it's actually getting pretty crowded up there. I mean, we've already got thousands of satellites orbiting Earth, helping us with GPS, weather forecasts, internet, and TV. If we start filling space with garbage, then our trash might crash into those important satellites and break them. It's like throwing rocks in a room full of expensive computers. Eventually, you're gonna hit something important and break it. There's already a problem called space junk, where old satellites and rocket parts are just floating around in space, occasionally crashing into new satellites and space stations. Adding our household trash to that mess would just make everything worse. Astronauts on the space stations already have to worry about getting hit by flying space debris. I mean, do we really want them to also have to dodge flying banana peels and empty soda cans? So, if launching trash into space is such a terrible idea, what do we do with all of our garbage? Well, it turns out we've got much better options right here on Earth. We can recycle a lot of our trash, turning old bottles into new bottles and old paper into new paper. It's like magic, except instead of making things disappear, we're making old things into new things. We can also compost food scraps, which means letting them rot in a controlled way so that they turn into rich soil for growing new plants. It's like feeding the Earth so it can grow more food for us. We can also reduce how much trash that we make in the first place. Instead of buying things wrapped in lots of plastic, we can choose things with less packaging. Instead of throwing things away when they break, we can try and fix them. And instead of buying new things all the time, we can use what we already have for longer. It's like being a trash prevention superhero, stopping garbage before it even gets created. Some of our trash can even be burned in special facilities that capture the energy and turn it into electricity. It's like having a campfire that powers your house instead of just making pretty flames. And the trash that can't be recycled, composted, or burned can go to carefully designed landfills that are much safer and cleaner than just dumping everything in a hole. The real cool thing, though, is that all these Earth-based solutions are way, way, way cheaper than launching trash into space. Instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to launch 10 pounds of trash, we can recycle, compost, and safely dispose of thousands of pounds of trash for just a few dollars. 
It's like choosing between buying a candy bar for a dollar or buying the exact same candy bar for a million dollars. The choice seems pretty obvious when you put it that way. So, to recap for my five-year-old space explorers, we don't launch our trash into the sun because it is incredibly expensive, it's really dangerous, it requires more fuel than we can imagine, and doesn't actually solve our problem. Plus, we have much better, cheaper, and safer ways to deal with our trash right here on Earth. Space might seem like an infinite garbage can, but it's actually a much more expensive, dangerous, and complicated place that we should probably keep clean for future space adventures. So the next time someone suggests shooting our garbage into the sun, you can smile knowingly and explain that while it sounds like a great idea, it's actually about as practical as using a rocket ship to deliver pizza. Sure, it would be really cool, but it's probably not the best use of our rockets, our money, or our time. Sometimes the most obvious solution isn't actually a solution at all. It's just a really expensive way to make an even bigger mess.